Welcome to the show, friend. We are in the middle of building a new studio because we had to come to Memphis to care for my son's cancer. Also, my producer and his wife are right on the verge of having their first baby, so we're having to dig up some of our old shows to provide you with inspirational, educational material. And <clears throat> I need to talk to you about what's happening in Ferguson and connect it to courage and cowardice. Because as I've watched and read the news reports that are coming out of Ferguson, I have been frankly appalled at what is happening. And, and by that, the truth is going to come out as to whether or not the officer killed Michael Brown in cold blood, all right? There's now footage of witnesses saying that Brown and he scuffled, Brown ran away and then changed his mind and was running back to attack the policeman. And that's why the shots were in the front of his body. In the end, I believe the truth will come out. But in the meantime, it appears to me that people like Eric Holder and Al Sharpton are using this as racists to stir up hatred in the African-American community against non-African Americans, especially white Americans. Listen, racism is a sin, okay? There's only one race, the human race. We all come from Adam and Eve, all right? Christ died for all of us. So racism is inherently a sin. And one other thing, I have two African American children. I adopted and raised two black children. They're my kids. So for anyone who wants to, to call me a racist, you're a liar and you're trying to stir up racism. But the truth of the matter is that for example, the knockout games, so-called games, are usually committed by young black men against white people. Is that not racism? I don't see Al Sharpton condemning that. I mean, uh, Willie Stevens cold cocked a six month pregnant woman, knocked her out. She could have been killed, her baby could have been killed. This was a racist attack. We've got to run this episode. It's on courage and cowardice. My exhortation to you, whether you're white, black, Hispanic, whatever, is that we have to speak about justice and what is right and what is wrong based upon not race, but upon truth, all right? And then let the chips fall where they may, but not succumb to the racist baiting of Al Sharpton and Eric Holder. Welcome to the program, friend. Today's top stories. This president running America into the ground. This country holds 25% of our debt and their economy is slowly but surely strangling ours. These babies, nearly 4,000 of them were killed yesterday. This militant group of enemies of marriage, they are getting one success after another in the military, in various states, and in various court rulings. Oh, it's a dark hour. Let's be honest. You don't have to be a prophet to see that America is in grave danger. The country that used to be the city on the hill, the country that sent more missionaries throughout the world than any country in the world, is now the world's biggest exporter of pornography. The nation that had the most prosperous economy is dying, slowly, wilting, while China is not only ahead of us, but is slowly beginning to strangle us. The country that used to have a surplus in its budgets is now running a $16 trillion debt, enslaving our children. How did we get here? And what do we have to do to get out? In the next two programs, I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk with you about the four C's and the four C's. The four good C's and the four bad C's. And this is one of those programs where I will talk to you and use what's going on in the news as a backdrop to say, for me to say to myself, and perhaps for you to say to yourself, Lord, things are bad. What should I do? 
what can I do? Is there anything, Lord, that you want from me? At the end of the day, in fact, I believe it was Edmund Burke who said, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is that good men do nothing. So what I'll do is I'll start with the four positive C's and then we'll go to the four negative C's, all right? And the reason is this, when they teach men and women in the Secret Service to identify counterfeits, counterfeit money, what they do is they, they have them study and learn backwards and forwards real money. They don't bring out 100 counterfeit bills and teach them all these different counterfeits. No, no, no. They bring out only the real. Because once someone knows the real, they can quickly identify a counterfeit. You with me? So, if you're grieving the state of our nation, as I am and as anyone with a heart after our maker, a heart after truth, and justice, a heart that loves liberty, anyone with a heart for justice will know that we're in great danger. And so the question is, is it too late? Is there anything we can do to get our country back? I believe there is. And I believe it revolves around the four good C's and embracing them, acting them out, and repudiating the four bad C's. All right, what are the four good C's that we're gonna talk about today? Courage, controversy, conflict, and confrontation. Let's be really pedantic here. Pedantic, that's a big word. Yeah, it means let's be instructive, like we, would, like we were teaching a classroom of young people. Courage, controversy, conflict, confrontation. If we are going to retrieve this country, we're going to have to have all four of them at play in our lives. So, if you're not up for a discussion about those four C's, then I recommend that you find a very lovely place next to an ostrich, perhaps, where you could bury your head in the sand. And always remember this. If your head is buried in the sand and you're an ostrich, there are people that make really, really good ostrich boots. I've got a couple pair. I don't think I want to end up as the footwear for some God-hater. I'll be right back.